Welcome on into the Command Center Podcast. I'm Logan Paulson here with Fred Smoot and Santana Moss. Yeah, yeah. Santana, what my dad that? texted me to tell you something about the moon, Yeah, but I can't find it in my phone. Tell him I want to see the dirt. You want to see the dirt? I want to see it, man. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, we <laughs> we did a segment where Santana pretended to, pretended to be a draft prospect. Draft yep. Got a question about the moon. He said he's not sure if the moon is real or space no, is real. No, space. no, space. I know space is there. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, I said, I don't, I'm not a believer of we us landed. landing right. on the moon. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And it was kind of a bit. And if you want to check that out, it's on the Command Center yeah. show. So yeah. check that out on YouTube. But and my dad made name. a my dad made a comment about it. So yeah. in honor of my dad's comments, I wore this shirt today, which has the moon and hey, astronaut. Man. And you but, know what? I would have never thought that you know, brilliant as your dad is, and he an astronaut and all the stuff he done did. How did he feel just having you? <laughs> That's a great question. Hey, hey. <laughs> so, so <laughs> did that hurt his feeling? <laughs> it's funny because, like, in my family, I got like a bunch of like really smart people. Like my grandpa, you a football player? Yeah, and I'm like a football player. But he's player. a smart football player. Yeah. So yeah. I go, I go to like family dinners, so and my uncle's a lawyer. My not, dad's an aerospace engineer. It's, it's not only my that grandpa was a doctor. My my other grandfather was a architect. You had the worst and, job <laughs> out of all of them. I mean, you made it to the league. And so they're like, hey. what does it mean to play football? You know, you're like, okay, that's, 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 hey, that's big, man. Yeah. <laughs> your look at your you dad like, should be proud. Yeah. Your dad they look at like proud. that. I bet you when you come in the kitchen, they be like, oh, <laughs> here come the dummy out the family. <laughs> I only went to UCLA. <laughs> it's a public school. I haven't said that. It's a public school. You're probably the only public school guy in the family, too. My God, you a failure. I know. So that's, that's all. It's <laughs> hey, don't listen to Fred, bro. Don't listen to Fred. Oh, my God. Fred, Fred trying to belittle you. It's man. high pressure in the Boston hey. family. Yeah, like, I, I, get, I get what he's saying. He's saying, look, though, when you look at those those different you know qualifications yeah. that they have. It's a big deal. You're a football player. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That's Think about going to but the Boston family but reunion. But you're bright. And they standing up here if I was just governor of it. And then he like, yeah, I play, I play for Washington. Like, this dude, you the dumb driver of the family, man. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh my just, gosh. Uh, just a reminder, we're brought to you by Bet365. Oh. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe every sport should be epic. Right now, new customers can choose between two offers when they open an account at Bet365. Use a QR code to sign up, deposit 10, and choose between either. First bet, say, it offer by placing right up to a thousand and if your qualifying bet loses you receive a match refund in bonus bets or betting get offer and place a bet of five dollars or more and get 150 in bonus bets whatever the sport whatever the moment it's never ordinary bet 365 official sports betting partner of the washington commanders must be 21 plus and physically located in virginia please gamble responsibly if you or someone you know has a gambling problem please call 1-800-GAMBLER all right, so let's get to it. Lots of moves for Washington. Lots of quarterback moves. Yeah. Specifically, what year was this draft? What year was Sam Howell drafted? Two years ago? Two years ago. So that's 2021. Yeah. Right, so of now. those yeah. guys, only one guy is really on the same team they were Brock on before. Brock Purdy. No, it's, is it Brock Purdy? It's mm. Brock Purdy. And no, um, Malik Purdy Willis. Draft. Was it? Oh, he Malik. hasn't played a lot. I think it was... <laughs> um, Trevor Lawrence, or one of those. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no you're no. thinking of Justin this Fields. This is this is Dez. Oh, okay, you're right. You're right. Though. Sam Howell, Sam, Sam. Uh, Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett. All these guys are gone. Brock Matt Purdy. Carell. I was, I was thinking Denver. about that 2021 draft. Yeah. We were just talking about all those quarterbacks yeah. being traded. So. Yeah. so Sam Howell obviously traded to Seattle. Yep. For a fourth round pick, a Great third home third round him. pick. Great home. Desmond Ritter traded to the Cardinals for Rondell Moore. Never play again. <laughs> and Kenny Pickett. Um, what and so and the number four. And their fourth pick, 120, to the Eagles for one. I don't even understand how to read this. 98 and two seventh and two picks in two, 2025. Yeah, do it again. Read it, Jason. I don't got it. I don't have the juice for that. All right. <clears throat> Kenny Pickett and a fourth, which is the a fourth so they, 20th. So they sent that, yep. right? Yes. Okay. Was sent to the Eagles for the Eagles second. That's the 98th pick. Mm -hmm. And then two. 2025 20, seventh round picks. Mm. The second is one is 98. Their second rounder is 98. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make any does. sense. <laughs> yeah, uh, it could have been a typo. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been a what? Is he part of the post? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I will Google it. Yeah. Let's Google. Let's get that fact check real quick. Yeah. So just talking through that, obviously not a lot of value necessarily for these players. I think Sam has the most value. Fred, you were talking about Justin Fields too. And I think even it's interesting that Sam's trade value was more than Justin Fields. Yeah. So obviously yeah. teams value, but what does that say about, Hey, the quarterback evaluation and kind of the NFL 
It's like stocks. Yeah. Buy low, sell high. Yeah. Right? We 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 bought sell <laughs> low. We sold him high. Right. right? And and one thing about the Chicago, because of of their wordage, uh their Stock depleted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, you were talking about this earlier on the Ticket to the Draft podcast. Yeah. You can also check that out. Fred does a great job there yeah. analyzing that on the on our podcast. Yeah. But kind of go into that a little bit. Yeah. I just feel like the thing about it is because Ryan Pose came out and said, once he said that we are going to trade him, he automatically dropped the mm-hmm. stock you can get. Like you yeah. want, like if, if I really wanted to get the highest draft pick I could for him, I either had to trade him early mm-hmm. or I got to trade him late. Yeah. I can't trade him in between though. Like yeah. think about this. Like before the announcement you're saying? Yes. Before the announcement, I either wait till the season start because every year we watch out the week one, somebody yeah. quarterback is hurt. And now I could literally say, give me a second rounder for this guy. You know, because now you at my mercy. Yeah. So I thought what, what Chicago did was self-sabotage themselves by talking too much. All right. A lot of people would have traded for Justin Fields before free agency started. But once you let free agency start and you let Russell Wilson sign and then the dominoes start to fall, you, you're not left with enough suitors. Now you, you're now you betting against yourself. Or or it's like if you ever watched the um, – like that's it. Uh, CNBC when they're talking about stock market, yeah, yeah. you got the guy Kramer who everyone hates uh, yeah. screaming. Uh, yeah. And 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 as soon as he says a stock is good, how it depletes and it's like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I feel like Justin Field has some of that effect. I mean, as soon as they yeah. got on him and started talking about where his value should be at, you just saw it, you know, fading away. And then before you know it, they got to dump him. I mean, they we, everyone knew that he was going to have to go somewhere. You, I mean, you almost, you we was almost 100% sure that Chicago was not going to get uh, miss out on that chance of getting um, Caleb. Caleb, Williams. Caleb Williams or whoever they had maybe been yeah. in that spot. So I feel like they should have just got rid of him way ahead of time than sitting there waiting and holding on to him. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I mean, I still feel that he's in a pretty good spot. I feel like now he's in a better spot yeah, than he was because now a you week have ago. a team that can win, and they might. You know, I can't say might. I think that staff, especially the new, you know, uh, OC, he's going to allow him Arthur to be able Smith. to be himself. Arthur Smith style of offense is going to allow him to be himself. So it's going to be interesting watching him and Russ over there. But uh, he's in a great spot. You, you're not. You're not so much like the spot. Uh, well, Justin so Fields. no, I, I think I like the spot for Justin Fields. I, I was a little confused about what the goal was for Pittsburgh, but after we yeah. talked through it on the Ticket to the Draft podcast, it yeah. became a little more clear to me. Like I'm like, what's the value? Because you're going to lose him. Like yeah. he's going to hit free agency, free agency right? Yeah. And so yeah. like he's going to get out of the building. But like you were saying, you have kind of a year trial period to mm-hmm. kind of say this is what he does well we, we think he can work with Arthur Smith yeah. and we kind of have that inside track you know we talked about the draft a lot obviously yeah. and one of the things that's hard is you don't know how the guy's going to fit Be, in your it, culture and you're building yeah. and so here you get him for a six round pick yeah. a guy with a lot of talent a lot of potential yeah. to kind of see that roadmap. and for me I thought it was kind of silly initially before we started talking because yeah. I was like man you just kind of threw away this pick he's going to leave next year but yeah. that's not necessarily true you yeah. could work the Jordan Love thing yeah. work an extension instead of signing his fifth year option and maybe you have a guy long term in Arthur Smith offense that's yeah. that kind of could potentially work for him. Now yeah. we talked a little bit about how that system in terms of throwing over the Play middle action, of the field yeah, 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 yeah. isn't always right yeah. for him. But and you I'm know, sure Arthur evolved. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If if he's been in the system for a year, maybe you get there, you feel good about it. Yeah. But the thing I wanted to bring up is do you think I thought when Kenny Pick, Pickett went for what he did, which is essentially they um the Pittsburgh gave up a fourth and Kenny Pickett yeah. for a third and two sevenths in 2025, which yeah. is basically like a pick swap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that kind of set the quarterback value. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That kind of set the market. So once that happened, it became abundantly clear that there was no second round pick for Justin Fields. There was no third round pick for Justin Fields. Like it was going to be some type of pick swap. But it explains why Sam Howe gets, gets a third with a pick swap. Yeah. Well, like, nobody would have said two years ago out of all these quarterbacks, Sam Howe would have been the best. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the other thing. We talked about this too, Tan. I'd like to get your thoughts on it. And, I, you know, Fred, we talked about this already. Yeah. Your price point with Sam is <clears throat> controlled, I think, for two more years, right? Yeah. Unlike Justin, who is a free agent. Knowing that he yeah, yeah. this year. Right? He has a little more uh, A little more runway, room. right? Yeah. And I think that's probably a big factor in it. You that's think? a big factor. And then also, if you're looking at what you're getting, you're getting a guy that's young, that just gave you a, a full year and showed you that 4, his, yards. that throw, that, yeah. that you kind of like unsure where his his ceiling, ceiling at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like if you look at the one part of that season last year, you like, oh man, he has something. Yeah, that and then the late part of the season, you like, did he hit a wall? Yeah. Or did they just leave him out there to you know hang him out of the dry? So 
any team should have went at, you know, saying that, man, we bringing a guy in that potentially could start this year, but if anything, is going to be a great backup. At the least, he's a the 29th starter in the NFL, yeah. right? He's he's a starting quarterback in the NFL, and I think he's just going to fill in that old – that Hasselbeck slot over there. He, he, his body bill reminds me of Hasselbeck. Everything, yeah. and, and yeah. I can see him just stepping in and that being his team for the next 10 years. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's a lot of people that say, oh, well, Sam, to develop him here would have been a nice opportunity. But I also think uh, Adam Peters deserves a shout out, too, for identifying that trade value. Yeah. And in a draft that's, you know, top heavy in terms of, yeah. you know, the top 90 players, yeah. adding another pick there. And again, in a, in a situation where we're, we, we talk about Minnesota on Ticket to the Draft where they yeah. could trade up potentially, yeah. having another pick there, we could kind of sweeten the deal or yeah. make it is, 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 is an important I mean, thing. Yeah. So, and, and Fred, you talked about this. Yeah. Taking a guy that you got for a fifth round pick and then getting a third round pick in return. That is, that is. That's that's bro. good business. And it, it's it, Wall Street. Hey, baby. that's what I say. Like, <laughs> that's the first thing that stood out to me. I'm like, hey, you know, one, he getting, he, we traded Sam. But I'm like, man, did you see what we just did with that trade? This yeah. man was a fifth round pick for us. We just got a third. Yeah. yeah. In a draft that, man, you never know what we can do with that third yeah. pick or the other picks in front of oh, them. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so we yeah. just put ourselves in a situation where we got money, we got cash, we got capital, yeah. we got liquid. We, yeah. we we can do whatever we want. Yeah. You want you need some? All right. Come on, let's talk. You <laughs> yeah, feel I like me? It. You know, it's a, it's a great point. So awesome job identifying that. And I think, you know, t I think it's also a testament to Sam to a certain extent, right? Oh, yeah. Like Tanny, you, you pointed this out. Like he played well for yeah. he looked like remember I remember sitting on this show and talking about, man, if he can continue this for another Four or five right. games. He's the he's, he's the, the guy. Answer. He was leading the league in yards at yeah. one point. Yes, and number then one just, guy. You know, big time <laughs> throws. The whole it's crazy. Game. So I mean, obviously very talented. And hopefully that works out for him, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully it works out for the Commanders. Yeah. But just a reminder, we're brought to you by Bet Three Six Five at Bet Three Six Five. We don't do ordinary. We believe every sport should be epic. Right now, new customers can choose between two offers when they open an account at Bet Three Six Five. Use the QR code to sign up, deposit ten, and choose between either. First bet safety net offer by placing a bet up to 1000 and if your qualifying bet loses, you receive a match refund and bonus bets. Or bet and get offer and place a bet of $5 or more and get 150 in bonus bets. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365, official sports betting partner of the Washington Commanders. Must be 21 and older or physically located in Virginia. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know needs help, I have the problem gambling. And needs help. That's what yeah. I should have said. Call. I need, I need help. One eight hundred gambler. That yeah. camera is right in the way. Hey, when I tell you, when I tell you, I'm doing like this. Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm in dodgeball? Yeah, we don't, we don't have that read memorized just yet, but we're still working. Yeah, on we that. did. We're almost there. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we've got the free agent frenzy with theme music. Apparently, right, Jason? Yeah, yeah I'm going to add theme music to this because we're going to be doing it for a while. <laughs> And uh, when I think of frenzy, I think of like Jaws music. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think when it's so, like queer? What should like I do a, like here? Like a feeding frenzy? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, yeah. Well, you know the music they play when 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 Jason chasing you, and, oh. and people always fall on the ground and crawl and look back. <laughs> this, like I just think of dun 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. I was thinking something maybe a little bit more optimistic. Something uh, more, not a horror. Yeah, like, cool, because it's like, you know, like, this is an opportunity for the team. New free agents, new opportunity. Yeah, it's a frenzy of excitement as All opposed right. to All right, well, let's have our fans. I'll put a couple of these in here while we're talking about it. <laughs> uh, uh, our fans can vote for the one they want moving forward. Uh, uh, All right. Leave a comment. Uh, sounds good. So let's start with the one that I've been getting the most probably comments about yeah right is marcus Mariota. Yeah. yeah and i think some people are very high in the move but more more people i talk to are kind of like they question the move because they saying is he our identifier is he identifying who we gonna drag oh, I see what you're saying. you know what i'm saying yeah. like so they trying to and i tell people that really has nothing to do with it yeah. now that i think about it because mm -hmm. what if i want my second screen quarterback to be a switch hitter mm -hmm. do something different than my starter does yeah. like so at the end of the day I can't look at it, identify it. And plus, these top three quarterbacks kind of do the same thing in a way. Yeah, yeah it's just different different colors, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Different, different, different speeds. Yeah. Different they speeds. do everything yeah. at speed. Like, Caleb's not the fastest. The, the fastest out of them is Daniels. Yeah. All right? Uh, He's not the biggest. Daniel's not the biggest because that's Drake. Well, and, then, and Drake can run, but not as well with, as Caleb. Okay, like, so but he can it, throw over the middle of the it, field better. It, like, they've all got different ticks, yeah. but they all I think they all would work in a version of the offense that Same we watched offense. in yep. 2021 yep. with Cliff Kingsbury. Yep. The question I have is, again, I don't know if it's an indicator necessarily, Tana, mm -hmm. but my question to you is like, 
does this get you excited? Do you think he can be a mentor for a young guy coming in? And like, how do you think that role? Because like for me, I think a mentor, and I'm like, man, we should have kept Jacoby Brissett. Now I don't think that was an option in talking yeah. with people affiliated with that with that decision because yeah. I think Jacoby wanted to go somewhere get, be yeah. be a starter. Which yeah, I think yeah. that's good for Jacoby. Go do that. Do you think Mariota fills that bill as a guy that you want in the room? With a young player, that's a great question, yeah. brother. I mean, I, honestly, you know, and I'm still searching for the answer because I'm I'm looking like okay, uh, maybe this staff knows something that we don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And maybe he is one of those guys that they've they, they've seen him in the in the room at this position. You know, being that second guy or being a guy who they're not going to really going to you know heavenly count on for this year to to lead us nowhere to be a great guy for a young guy that that they can that they can lean on you know what i mean I, i'm not sure i haven't i haven't heard mm -hmm. that he's one of those type of guys but maybe the, the staff knows something a little more and they know him you know brian and that's Johnson what i'm saying yeah. exactly so you know i think also getting back to the question of does he identify who we're going to get mm -hmm. in the draft it's another great question because <laughs> I thought when I saw him come here, then it was almost like, okay, Jay Daniels. Daniels. getting Dane Because yeah. they're going to have to make sure he tell him, listen to this guy. He's yeah. going to tell you. You know what I mean? But then again, like you just said, maybe we want to get a guy that can have a little, you know, a be like a little versatile. And then get another guy who who's not quite him, yeah. but can do some of the same things mm -hmm. in Drake. So I don't know, but I'm looking at it like this. Um, I think when you have a guy that played the amount of you know, games that he's played, Seeing what he's seen, being a high draft pick, it's it's not a bad idea to have a guy like that in the building, regardless if he identifies with being that kind of a leader in the room or not. I'm sure when he gets on the field, he can show any guy who's playing that position, hey, I'm a veteran, and these are some of the things I've learned through the course of me playing this game, you know? Yeah, to me, that's more probably the important thing about this signing is, like, what kind of mentor he is. And, like, when Jacoby came in, like, anybody you talked to from Indy, anybody you talked to from Indianapolis, anybody I'd played with that had worked with him just had nothing but glowing things to say about yeah. him. Mm -hmm. And with Marcus, it's not quite that emphatic yeah, in we terms of how it is. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, you know, he like you said, he's, watched he, them, he's yeah. been in yeah. the league for a long time. And what I find is dudes that have been around, they've got the tricks of the trade. And it's sometimes, like... The older you get, too. Yeah, the older you get, the more experience you have, the more of those things you have. Uh, so... And I think he's just more quiet and unassuming. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure the guys in the quarterback room, he talks to way more yeah. Yeah. than he talks to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you holding the clipboard and this guy come to the sideline, he a type guy, sit you down. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, this is what happened on this play. This is what mm -hmm. I saw. And that's what you want. You want his perspective yeah. in situations. And I think that's what he's going to bring to that youngster in those yeah. situations is a grown mind and, a, and grown thoughts. Yeah. And I think this year – really showed you, especially after watching this year, I think 60-plus quarterbacks started in games. Mm -hmm. So people said, I need a backup. Forget my starter. Yeah. Like, if we don't have a backup, the season is gone. Yeah. I, and I think New York Jets really shocked people yeah. after Aaron got hurt, and now you got Zach Wilson and the season going down the drain. It's almost it. like the – I ain't mean to cut you off. It's almost like the running back position. At one point in time, you just looked for those marquee guys, and now it's like – we need two or three guys. Yeah, we, yes. we need for sure two guys on our team that yeah. can carry the load. And so it seemed like quarterback is trending that way now too because at one point in time, the quarterback position, those guys are going to stay in the pocket. They barely get in touch. Yeah. You know, we're going to protect them. Now these guys getting outside the pocket more, so we need another guy. Yeah. We need a guy who's going to come in here and be able to lead us come midseason or somewhere down the line where our quarterback get nicked up a little bit. We need a guy that could come out here. Still in right now. And we don't have to change the offense. Yeah, know? and I think that's the other question that is kind of yet to be determined. We'll know better as we get towards training camp, but is he the guy that you feel great about him coming in for you yeah. and winning some games? Yeah. And yeah. I don't know. You know, like yeah. the last time he played, he was a star in Atlanta. He did some good things, struggled with some stuff. But in that spot duty, maybe he comes in as a little bit more productive. But so we also also seen a lot of quarterbacks with Arthur Smith's offense down in Atlanta not do well because I yeah. think they really well like took the pass away and just ran the ball out. So there. like when you this is we're getting off topic, but when you watch Arthur Smith's offense with Desmond Ritter, yeah, they put so much on the position, yeah, like checks, motion shifts. We got to move this guy. I got side adjusts. I got to work it, and so that's a lot. Yeah, and so maybe if you kind of get him in a different system and. It, a little bit more. Tone it down. Yep. We'll see another guy, Keelan Farrell. Yep. Former. What is he? Fourth overall pick. Yeah, we the Raiders. Four. Yep. Um, Clemson. Back when they were in Oakland, right? Yeah. 
And uh, have you guys watched him at all? I can start us I, off. I watched yeah, him. He's uh, he, he been playing for the uh, 49ers. Yes. Right? Yeah. He, he was in rotation for the 49ers. I right, made some plays, flashed a little bit, but hopefully he can find a home here because yeah. he haven't found his niche yet. You know yeah. how some guys ain't found their perfect yeah. fit yet? And then coming into the league, that high of a pick, that much pressure. I think overdrafted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. most definitely overdrafted. When you overdraft a guy, sometimes they never catch back up mm, to yeah. where they're supposed to be. But if he's coming here and he's looking and he say, all right, it's John Allen right there, Deron Payne, I got a slot right here. Mm -hmm. And then if I can get in here and hold this slot down, yeah. I maybe can live up to my draft status. Yeah. yeah, and I think to me he's just he's uh, he's a rotational guy, good Bingo. football player. It reminds me a lot of James Smith Williams when you Bingo. watch the film, kind of like mm -hmm. he, like heavy hands, heavy head kind of guy that's going to give you set a hard edge, has some athletic twitch, but a little stiff in the hips. Yeah, mm -hmm. but again, like I think when you look at what Dan's done in his time, and now uh, Witt has done with the defenses down in Dallas, is they just have a good four man rotation. So everyone's going to be fresh, everyone's yeah. getting reps, everyone's getting opportunities. Yeah, and I think that's what he gives you. He just gives you a piece that. You know, maybe not have the highest ceiling, yeah. but he's got a good, Solid. good high floor. Solid. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, he took the words out of my mouth. You know, rotational guy. He's a guy that you never know. He maybe surprise us because this defense is going to give him opportunity to be in there at times when he's Rush fresh and, and he yep. can go out there and get after that quarterback. So just a staple, just, just another guy that you can add to a line that 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 we're trying to fill in voids. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Getting more bodies in that position. And when you have a guy, remember I talked to you about as a receiver, you got certain guys that want to be out there every down. Yeah. And then I remember, um, and I always had this mindset, like, I'm a guy that I'm I'm I'm, I'm blazing yeah. almost every down. So when I ain't getting the ball, I'm coming out. I'm gonna take that breather. Cause yeah. when I come back in, third yeah. down, I'm never know. I'm yeah. fresh. Yeah. And it, it wasn't until I got to Mike Shanahan that he saw the same thing. He, but but instead of him having me as a starter, he said, Look, bro, I want you in the third down when you when, when, when you when you know yeah. you're coming in there. To Get move the chains, yeah, and and I look at a guy like this with him, you know, yeah. who knows if he gonna come in here and be that starter. Yeah. But the way they run their defense, yeah. hey, they got eight stars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got guys, man, that could come in and just like you know, just like when you watched the Cowboys a, a year ago, yeah. we used to be sitting up like, who is this guy? Yeah, <laughs> making a damn play. Yeah, but that's that's what this defense yeah. allow you to do. So yeah. I think he's a solid piece, you know, solid pickup. Yeah, I think so too. And I think, you know, like you said, part of that rotation. Another guy that's part of the rotation is Dante Fowler Jr. Yep. Yeah. Former, and uh, we saw him yeah. do third. some of the same thing we yeah. just talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Last I, year. I think they kind of fit the same role. I think when you look at Fowler, he was a guy that I think has more pass rush juice. Yeah, mm -hmm. Outside backer ish. Yeah. He, yeah. He's yeah. more that uh, in the dirt you know what I mean? uh, of uh, Colin Farrell. But this is what I do love. When I look at all these dudes, I was looking at the list not too long ago the other day. <sighs> all ex first round draft. Picks. Bingo. Like, so that's all in there somewhere. Them. Wow. So you know it's some, yeah. it's some player it's, it's, in, yeah. there. It's in there. The question is, um, the coaching staff probably sit down and say, "Can we unlock? Can we, it? Can we unlock it? Can we, can get we out unlock of what the other coaches couldn't?" It's almost like talking about your kids. Yeah, and you hadn't seen them turn that co corner yet. Yeah. but you're like. He got my blood. So yeah. he, it, it's so many. As long now. as he keep chipping at it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Eventually it's gonna come out of him. That's yeah. how I look at some of these yeah. guys. I'm like, you getting you it's a pattern in there. Yeah. All these guys you picking up. X number two. Yeah. X number X three. Number four. Pick. X number four. four they all yeah. high picks. Yeah. And you're like, why didn't they why well, didn't yeah. we see that over yeah. there where they was at last? Yeah. And it's all about getting in the right scheme. That's Mike one of the things Pitt. Joe Witt spoke on first, you know, the first day he sat in this seat. He said, Man, look, we looking for the guys that we can get. And fit what we like to do. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So obviously these guys have showed them something on film that they say, hey, we want that guy because we can unlock what he has in him, his yeah. potential. Yeah, and I think the one thing that Dan <laughs> said that sticks out to me too, and, and Witt said the same thing, is we, we want to like guys with traits, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I look at uh, Keelan Failer, like he's good at setting edges in the run game, right? Mm -hmm. He's a physical, rotational guy that has value. Let's yeah. maximize what that is, right? Mm -hmm. I think Dante Fowler has some pass rush juice. Yeah. So can we get him yeah. out there as like the third defensive end and yeah. rush and yeah. move him inside, move him outside? Side. Yeah. And like I think about when he was in uh, at Florida rushing the passer, mm -hmm. like they moved him all over the formation. Yeah. Like he's not that guy that he was in college, yeah. but he's got some skills. So yeah. again, I'm, I'm excited that a coaching staff, the coaching staff here, is a group that can identify traits and say, how do we maximize this player? Because I, I want, I want Cleveland Failer, Failer, and or excuse me, in on first down. Yeah, yeah, and I want. Dante Fowler in on third, third down, down yeah. right? So, like, how do we maximize those skill sets? The guy that I may be most excited for, quite honestly, is the next guy is Jeremy Chin. Mr. Mm. Chin! 
and he you know didn't play a lot last year in carolina yep. mm-hmm. like kind of not an injury but just more of a stylistic difference in terms of how they wanted to play their defense yeah but a guy that was up for defensive rookie of the year who came the in chase. second to chase yep. mm-hmm. and you know can play that kind of buffalo nickel in the mm-hmm. box and i think about what they did in dallas with all of like those Curse. big safety type mm-hmm. guys that yep. cover tight ends can play in the slot can be a linebacker and that's what he is yeah and i think he's a little <clears throat> bit more athletically athletically dexterous Ex- yeah. a little bit more explosive yeah. Yeah. than cam curl yeah. head, bit more head bust a wig splitter that's yeah. what i call him <laughs> yeah. head bust a wig splitter hey, i always told him she ain't gonna hit you right there <laughs> where it kind of and they what hey. i like and hey. Having a conversation with him, he is very sour on what happened last mm. year. Mm. It's, it's eating him up. Yeah. Like, it's totally eating him up. So he he's just chomping at the bit yeah. to get out there and prove Carolina made a mistake. And I, I love, love like, I always ask players, like, is it something else that's, that's, that's got you on fire? And he's mm. like, yeah, man. First of all, they ain't seen the best of me. Yeah. Nobody has. Yeah. Carolina didn't give me a chance to really play last year, so I'm mm. fresh. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm. Fresh and hungry is, is two dangerous mixtures. Yeah. So he, like on film, even last year when he didn't play a ton, he kind of reminds me of like a poor man's Kyle Hamilton a little bit. Mm. He's, you know what I'm saying? Like he's this big body that isn't quite a linebacker. I had to stop using that poor man because I had tried to describe one of my ex girlfriends as like a poor man's Beyonce, and she like cussed me out. So I just stopped using it. That's a probably good, like would you would, would good. You, Decision. Yeah, I've been saying, would you hey, like would you describe your girl as like a poor man? I'm like, yeah, look mm-hmm. at her. She looks like a poor man's Beyonce. <laughs> she was like, what are you talking oh about? My gosh. Jason, Jason, Jason had to make a note over there to make sure we're not getting in trouble. But yeah, so I think, I think the. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but I think um, but I think if you can again, if you have a defensive group, a coaching staff that can maximize a unique skill set, yeah, and a guy that I think can still play, like you're watching some of his like key plays from last year, man, like he hits, gets downhill, yeah. moves well in space. That'd be an exciting piece for Dan Quinn and and uh, and Wit to maximize. And he's still team. young too. Man. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, he's, he's youth on this side. On and this side. Uh, the great thing, he's on a prove it deal. You know. Yeah. You know, one for five and and home green. Yeah, and I like that you said yeah. that. that. That's an exciting opportunity. So yeah. the last guy I haven't watched yet because I didn't even know, even know that he signed because so many guys have signed. Yeah, but yeah. Noah Igbenogany. Way to nail it, Igbenogany. Igbenogany. You're gonna mess me up, Igbenogany. <laughs> I messed up. Now. And now from the Miami Dolphins. And yeah. Fred, you said you've watched him a little bit. Yeah. What do you think? First round, former first round pick, never got on God the field bless. because of Zay, <laughs> because of those two corners yeah, yeah. that they had yeah. down there in Miami, so he could get on the field. And he got hurt early yeah. in the thing, so he was he was hurt more than Keith Sweat yeah. at the beginning of his career. So that's why he never really got going. Uh, but strong, big, mm. big boned corner, yeah. fast corner, not. As, as much of a ball hawk as I would like, mm-hmm. but more of a PBU type guy. Yeah. But one of those youthful guys that have it. What like do you think we, his role is? In, I think I well, think he know he know, he he know the nickel. system. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, he, he was he was with the he, he he his first three years was with the Dolphins. Last year he was with the Cowboys. Cowboys. Oh, so he's so you know what I mean? He's a system guy that they know they can count on and to come in play, here and do. He can play nickel. Yeah. Okay. So he can play inside, which we have no body solidified. Yeah. Yeah. Is to solidify this is our nickel. And guy. the way you described him, kind of that big body nickel, yeah. like yeah. it's important you in today's a, NFL to have a guy. Got a build like. Like Quan a little bit, he got yeah, that a little bigger you know than Quan, I mean? a little bigger yeah. than Quan, yeah. but muscular built. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean to him. I mean, it look like he can run around a little bit. I only, he only got one inception, but you know, it, it, like I talked about bodies, talking about guys coming in here that can fill a void. I mean, you need bodies. You know, and it's one of the things we talked about in the secondary alone, yeah, yeah. especially the way they play the ball. It, I want to see this physical style of play. So obviously they they believe he could come in here and 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 Get bring that done. kind of play hey, here. So. Offsets when you have guys like a Emmanuel Forbes who's more on the skinny side. I need yeah. to add somebody over there with some bulk to him. Yeah, I you know it's awesome with free agency to kind of see these pieces come in. But I think the thing I'm most excited for now is like you know off season workouts. Like yeah. how do these guys start? implementing into these different roles and can they find spaces and how do they maximize within this defense another two guys i thought we should talk about returning guys not very familiar guys yeah jeremy reeves and jameson crowder yeah both re-signed to the team i think those are great signings yep let's clap that up give them a round of applause yeah, i appreciate them boys 
because you know Jeremy Reeves, special teams ace. Yeah, yeah. I think pro, for, you know, Pro Bowler at that coming position. coming off an injury. Glad yeah. for him because yeah. he, he's when people say heart of soul, he's yeah. one of them heart soul guys and proud of Crowder. Yeah, Crowder didn't even have a team at the beginning of last year. Yeah, and he ran, he returned like I need a job. He returned yeah. and he also showed them offensively that I, I still can, got some I juice. Can, I can be your your slot guy if you yeah. need me to be. So yeah. and talk about a guy that kind of fits that. You know, like both those guys. Mm -hmm. Crowder, uh, you know, obviously playing that slot role, had yeah. a really dynamic game. I forget which game that was, but really productive. Yeah, got on. And then uh, Reeves, I thought, just did a great job at times being that kind of Buffalo nickel player. Whatever so you another, need me to do. Another body that's Reeves, physical and tough. Reeves also probably was the most physical defensive back we had last year when he got in the game. Yeah. Like, he yeah. showed that grit. He showed that tenacity. He showed how Joe Witt said he going to come to the game. You know, he wanted, he wanted, he wanted them guys to be, you know, wake up that morning and chose violence. Yeah. And yeah. that's how, how Reese played the game. He played like that on special teams, played that way in the secondary. I won't be surprised if they try to use him in the secondary a lot more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I think he has that, he has that ability to that go out there it, and be like. more yeah. valuable to this team, to this secondary, the way they play the game. I think that fits uh, Reed's style of play. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I think we're optimistic we should be optimistic it's in the off season yeah. but still got a lot of growing to do a lot of things to come together but we're excited about some of these moves all right now it's time for would you rather presented by northwest federal credit union the official credit union of the washington commanders <clears throat> stop searching go northwest check out nwfcu.org slash washington to see how easy it is to join and our northwest can help make your money work for you stop by a branch or visit nwfcu.org slash washington today all right, so now, would you rather? And I think, all right, Jason, you coming on this? Let's see what we got here. He's getting his headphones on. He's nodding. Yeah, I'm in. He's He's in. Hater. Not hater, no, Jason. No, just, not a just, hater. Oh, no, just regular Jason? I just, think just regular Jason a hater, too. Facilitator. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's uh, Jason Kuyper, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, all right, He's in. My He's fault. In. I'm no, sorry. that's the other show. That's sick of the draft. So we'll, yeah. we'll keep just yeah, regular. I'm just facilitating. Game, game manager right, right here. <laughs> so what's the point of this segment, Jason? What we got? All right. So the point of this segment is with the draft coming up, there are a lot of teams that need quarterback mm -hmm. in yep. the draft, right? It's assuming we're taking in quarterback at number two. That's the overall consensus. But... There are options that are out there that are floating out there. There's a lot of moves that have been going around in the NFL. And there are some teams that clearly need a quarterback that need to move up to get one. Yep. So, with all the shuffling that's been going around, I'm going to ask you, would you rather have this quarterback or this draftable rookie quarterback? Yeah, right. all right, all right, cool. And I'm going to ask you these based on some teams that need a quarterback. So, for yep. instance, yep. here's the first one. The Raiders. Mm -hmm. They have Gardner Minshew. Mississippi Maine. Baller. Would you rather have Gardner Minshew? Mississippi Maine. Or move up and get a J.J. McCarthy or Michael Penix Jr.? I, I like to be realistic in my approach to this. I think J.J. will be gone. But they got to move up, though. They, yeah, he, just said, he just said move up. I would say if I close my eyes and think about it, I will rather have Michael Penix Jr. Ooh. He looks like a Raider. Uh, I'm just saying because he it, it, Michael Penis Jr. He might be besides JJ the most. I, I'm ready to start now, quarterback. Like mm -hmm. I'm ready to start the day I come in there. All right? You think so? He got some age on him. He does maturity. Yep, all right, uh, he the only lefty out the group. He can make every throw. Mm, he can I, spin it now. He can spin it. So I, I, when I close my eyes, I can see Michael Penix walking out of the tunnel as a Raider. Yeah. I don't see JJ as a Raider. Too pretty boy for that. Too pretty boy for that. Tell him what you got. I like Penix too, but I would say right now for this uh, team, I don't think they have the capital or they need too many pieces to be moving up trying to get a quarterback. So uh, I would think I would take I would take the mustache. The mustache. Gardner Gard Minshew. Gardner Minshew. I mean he Mitchell. he he looks like a Raider. The way he plays is like yeah. a Raider. He's yeah. a, he has that grit he ability that about him. Like, he, he's gonna go out there and get those guys fired up. He got a little Heineke in him. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he got that same kind of little thing that Heineke had. Mitchell like just go play football. That's what I'm saying. He yeah. went over crowds everywhere he goes. So yeah. he you know, he's gonna have he's gonna have some success over there. Yeah, and for me, Vegas. if and this is. In a perfect world, what I'd do is I'd keep Gardner Minshew and I'd draft J.J. McCarthy. McCarthy yeah. And I'd let J.J. McCarthy sit for a year is yeah. what I would do. Because yeah. I think, while I think J.J. McCarthy is extremely talented, I think he's he's not where I want him to be from a development standpoint. I don't think he can get there 100%. Yeah. I think he could be he could end up being the best quarterback in this class because like when you watch his tape, high-level production on third down, yes. aggressively pushing the football pro down the throws. field. Pro throws. Pro throws, pro concepts. So a guy yeah. that I like a lot. Um, so that's how I would do it. I would keep 
Minshew, and then I would have JJ sit for a year, and then in 2025, I'd be like, it's time for me to roll. Um, and then I do think Michael Penix, to Fred's point, can spin it, but f I don't know. There's something about his, the way he sees the middle of the field that gives yeah. me that gets me nervous. Yeah. But if he's there in the second round, I think you jump all over that and yeah. kind of operate under the same principle. Yeah. All right, I have him. the next one here. Our division rivals, the Giants, currently Jimmy. have Daniel Jones and Drew Locke on the roster. Mm, that stinks. They're, they're picking at six. <laughs> They're picking at six, so the chance of them getting a Jaden Daniels or Drake May, pretty nil. Would you rather have Daniel Jones and Drew Locke or have them move up and get a Jaden Daniels what or Drake if, what May? What if the trade package? What if the trade package was you get Daniel Jones and a first round pick? You know what I'm saying? And yeah. you get it's like a like you get a player and two picks to move up so they could take uh, so they could take Drake May. Yeah. Uh, or Jaden Daniels. Listen, they room is constantly uh, is, is, is it is today. It's the worst room in, in NFL. All right, let's it's, be honest. It's muddy. Quarterback sure. room. It stinks. All right, now. What does it smell like? A baby's pam. <laughs> <laughs> right, now. Good job, Fred. Way to handle that. I, I tried to, I tried to handle it. I know. I know it bit his tongue a I little know. bit. <laughs> but I also like to say, you know, really, listen, who would look good in that that, that blue, that red, that white? I could see Drake May rocking yeah, He would look it. good in that. He, yeah. he, he, would, he would look he would actually look Drake, like Daniel Drake, Jones. Drake, Drake made it like he built for that. Like, yeah, like, he like he built for that. He like, like like Daniel Jones from Carolina too, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Is he? Daniel Duke. Jones played from Duke. Oh, Duke. In the Duke. I, yeah, I knew Duke. somewhere over yeah. there. So he just looked like he... A giant. He yeah. looks like yeah. a giant quarterback. When I, when, if I got to pick out a Drake May and Jenny Day. Yeah, yeah. If I, I would say, I would say Drake May find a way to move up and get Drake. May. I think, I think he fits what they do over there. Like he yeah. just, like you close your eyes, like like, like Fred. Said, if I want to close my eyes and <laughs> envision somebody in that uniform, yeah. Because every time we go in that stadium, it's just Drury. So yeah, he looks like a quarterback that fits in that big. Big yeah. arm. Yeah. No matter what the weather is, no matter how down the he day is, fits it. he gonna go out there and play good and football. Yeah, he fits that man. And we're gonna make another poor man comparison, but uh -oh. you know, Jaden Daniel, Beyonce, or, Drake May, excuse me, poor man of our guy uh, Josh Allen up in Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? Mm, a little uh, yeah. bit less athletic. Yeah. Arms not quite as live, but has some of that playmaking grit to him. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think that that's something that Brian Dayball would just. Fall over himself to get because one, one of the things surprised either. One of the things about uh, uh, gosh, I'm messing all these Daniels up. Daniel Jones is Easy that he doesn't throw well. the ball over the middle of the field very well. Yeah, and when you look at our guy Drake May, like that is where he is. He, he, he do surgery. He do so, surgery. I think if I'm Brian Dayball, I'm probably like. I don't really like what's going on. The problem is they just paid Daniel Jones so much money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they got but they only they only on the hook for this year. Like okay. after this year, they'll be fine. And don't forget, they signed Brian Burns. I right, got him uh, uh, opposite Thibodeau. Mm -hmm. they, that's when the Giants turn it on when they have they 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 rush in. Yep. So now they probably feel like we're one quarterback away. Mm -hmm. Does the Giants moving up with trading with us we're not gonna two, do it we're right? not if we do do it what's the tax for that i i want your like number how much you asking well what they got the number five pick or six pick six six give me number six give me your number two uh, your second round pick, and then give me first next round. year's number yeah, one, I'm say, and next give me year. probably the year after that number one. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a big, it'd be a big. It's a ticket. big haul. I'd be like, come get it, but I can see it, <laughs> hey, but I can see that. Like, you if want I, it? come get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't feel bad at getting the number six pick. If if, if we gonna get all that, well, especially especially when also, I know, I know we still need a quarterback. And I, if if you're not sure about the next two guys, yeah, I feel like it's still more quarterbacks you, you know can get at least six. one tackle. And you know at least uh, a wide receiver of being that top five. Mm -hmm. You know at least somewhere. Yeah. So if I'm sitting at six, I'm gonna get somebody. And also, you then have three second round picks in the top whatever. Bingo. Yeah. You could trade back so to you the could, first, no yeah. problem. But no e problem. Easy. And if like you know Bo Nix or JJ starts sliding a little bit, it's like easy. Hey man, what we got? Yeah. So I, I do think there's like money. I know we're dealing we're we're fast dealing here, <laughs> but we can we can make something happen there. Hey, so. that's, that's what happens when you have capital, man. You have picks. <laughs> you can do what true. you want to. You can do what you want. Yeah, Adam Peters is really. Uh, he willing, put them together, he willing really and really dealing, job, boy. Yeah. You hear me? Uh, all right, the Broncos. They currently this have the Jared most, Stidham. This is the most interesting one, I think. Let's so ride. Do they? Do they <laughs> trade? Do they trade up? Would you rather have Jared Stidham or Drake May or a Bone Nix? Do you, do they wait they where pick, they are? What they pick is right now fourteen. 
Uh, I'll look it up to be exact. Yeah, I, think I know. I know they willing to do something. They, or the Broncos. They might. They, 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 they might give you have ownership right now. The they stay. Is they don't have any pitches. Twelve. They gave them all for the twelve. <laughs> yeah, the twelve. Episode, yeah. So. They, they hey. gave them all for Russell. Hey. All right. So maybe I see. I see Bo Nix going up there. His first press conference. Let's ride. <laughs> 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 I can see Bo Nix as a Bronco. It's such a high pick for him, though. I, I understand, but we're talking about a head coach. In his mind, I'm a quarterback guru. He yeah. is low key, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and I have a quarterback with a lot of snaps under yeah. his belt, college wise, in Bo Nix. I can plug him in and protect him with this defense in this run game and let him grow slowly. Yeah, I ain't got I ain't got a lot to give, but I'm gonna go ahead and say you can have part ownership in the team. <laughs> and I'm gonna I need a third overall pick. I'm gonna go get Drake May or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I may gotta throw something, throw something out there. I'm yeah. being funny, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But man, I, I see them going not with not with Buddy, Jared in the damn quarterback talking yeah, about no riding with him. So I don't care, I don't care who Sean Payton think he is. He ain't doing nothing with him. So with Sean Trump, with, uh, with Garrett Sidham, they won like six of eight games two years ago, yeah, you know luck. what I mean, in New Orleans when he was coaching New Orleans. Yeah, so he, in the sunshine, he, 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 in Antarctica. He, yeah. he just gets that, you know, he's just pulling strings and making so, so maybe yeah. he's like, I'm that dude. Yeah. You're but not that's, that dude. That's, a, that, that's an indoor, indoor stadium, so I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot yeah, of that yeah. stuff played a role, you know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, Drake May, go get him. All right, now we have the uh, the Vikings. They're picking at number 11, and they Skull. lost Kurt. So they have Sam Darnold. They traded for Sam That's Darnold. Uh, no. So if you're the Vikings at 11, are you? would you rather have Sam Darnold to start the season, or do you just get a quarterback? Daniels, you know what? Way, they might say, I don't think Sam yeah. Donald's that bad, man. I'm gonna start this one off. You're right, but I'm saying like he's familiar with that offense because your boy, who's a head coach over there, he's totally familiar. Came, with it. came from the Rams, so he he's familiar. Uh, I'm sure they probably still will want somebody else, you know, other than Sam Donald. But I won't feel bad if they get nobody and had to start a season with Sam Donald. I know you, and Where you would not person? walk into Foot Locker and buy you a shoe. <laughs> You wouldn't go in there and say, you know what? The friend wear this shoe, baby. <laughs> Give me that you shoe. That's what the, Sam Darnold is a you shoe. I You're so no. mean to Sam Darnold. No, but no. but my thing is with all these guys and all, it's not bad having any one of these quarterbacks because with the draft being what it is and how it, how it yeah. always unfolds, yeah, you can get one of these guys. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a Bo Nix. It's gonna be, I mean, a, a, a Penix Junior. Somebody gonna be around. I see when J. it's time for them picks. And if J. you J. feel J. like McCarthy. you want to spend that money, go get them. JJ McCarthy has proved at Michigan I'm a cold weather a cold weather quarterback. Yeah. All right, in Minnesota, you got to play in Chicago. They, you got to play in no. Green Bay. Yeah. He is more equipped than the West Coast quarterbacks mm -hmm. to come into the, into the Midwest yeah. and, and have no setbacks. So if I'm the Vikings, the only player in the first round that I really care about is J.J. McCarthy. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, he fits everything I need, especially with the, uh, I mean, the head coach they got over there. Yeah. McConnell, they, they know how to push the ball down the field. I got a number one receiver with J.J. with Justin Jefferson. Mm -hmm. I got a tight end with T.J. Hawkinson mm -hmm. to, to make it easy for him. Right now, if you plug in J.J. McCarthy to that Minnesota team, they might be a contender. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously he's got some growing to do. But the thing that I find interesting is kind of taking a little bit of Tanner's point and a little bit of Fred's point is what if you feel like you get away with Sam Darnold for a mm -hmm. season, but you draft Bo Nix mm -hmm. and you let him sit and develop and grow in that offense or Michael Penix or whoever it is at 11. I don't, I don't think you trade to get that 23rd pick here mm -hmm. from Houston yeah. without thinking you're going to move up. So I don't think this is going to happen. But So obviously they don't feel that way about Sam Darnold, but... I think they are definitely in the court. Like of all these teams, because of the actions they've taken so far, yeah. they are the most in the quarterback market. It just depends on how high they can get. And I would think, based on like what I've seen on film, Drake May would be their guy, which means they'd have to to ensure that they got to come to us. They'd have to get to two. Yeah. So like, what would it take for them to go from eleven to two that would make you happy? Saying maybe we don't want to take a quarterback here. Like, yeah. what would it take? From then, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Minnesota. Hey, Fred, I need, I, got, your, I need your future. I got 11. I got yeah. 23. I'll give you a second this year. All right, that's and I got a first next year and a first after that. All right, no, I, no, no that's four. I want. How about you. I give you? How about I give you uh, another two? How about I give you a first and a second next year? I'll give you two firsts this year. Yeah, we'll swap. I'll give you one next year. I'll give you a second. And I'll give you a third round so, pick this year. So I'm gonna end up with three first rounders and two second rounders. Yes, five picks. Yes, to get here. Oh, that yeah, seems I can, fair I can, to me. I, I can build a team. I yeah. can build a team. And how about, and how about we make that 
How about we make that second next year a third? No. It's got to be a second? It got to be a second. I'm taking nothing less than seconds at first. None, none about, less than it. How about a third and a fifth? Is that a pay phone? No, I don't want a pay phone. How about, how about a third and a fifth? <laughs> Put the quarter in the slot. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, this is what I want. First and seconds. Other than that, we ain't talking. All right, because evidently you want this guy. You have identified yeah, this guy. This guy. Yeah. And I got all the power is in my yeah, you hand. Got, you got the leverage. So this is what I want you to do. I want your future. <laughs> I want all of it. Yeah. Not some of it. Like for the next three years, I want to be picking Washington picks and Viking picks. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that's what I want. In case, you know what? In case I don't get my quarterback this year, yeah. then I can move up and get Shador. Yeah. I can move up and get whoever get hot next year. Yeah. I can, you know, I just want leverage and I want uh, maneuverability. I totally agree. But it would take, so I guess the point is there. Five it, picks. It would take a lot. Yeah. Take a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that. Does our last uh, one here leads nicely into our last one. This is the Washington focus. Would you rather? Would you rather trade out of that number two spot and get that draft capital, or just take a quarterback? Ooh, that's a good question. Man. Ooh, you want to start off, Fred? Oh, of course I, you do. This how it is. Yeah, I'm one of Let's the people. Let's hear from Fred Scheidman. <laughs> I'm one of the people like. Quality over quantity, because mm-hmm. okay. we all know if we pick ten draft picks, all ten won't be great pros. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to say, do I feel like it's another for show quarterback in here other than Caleb? Do you feel like it's one guy that you know, like besides for sure. Caleb, for sure, quarterback? I, I don't. All right. You don't feel like that. Okay. Do you feel like it's a couple of for sure tackles in this draft? Yes. I, or like as for sure as you can get. I, do you feel like it's a couple for sure DNs in this draft? Yes. So would you rather have a for sure tackle and a for sure first round DN than a questionable quarterback? Well, I think this is the thing that I keep going back to because people ask me this all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, when you look at the history of quarterback evaluation, I Talk think it's we, so hard. we need to do a study on this. Like, we mm-hmm. need, I just need to document them all out, write them down, see the production, and then have actual numbers here. But it's like less than 30% hit mm-hmm. rate, right? Tw- less than 20. So as much as I like Drake May, as much as I like Jane Daniels, I'm going to buy the history. The history mm-hmm. set the precedent here. And trust that I'm not going to be right here. And the thing that does work consistently is good teams. Like a good team let Brock Purdy chill for a year, and yeah. then Brock Purdy became Brock Purdy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A good team let Jaden Daniels develop for a year, and then he became Jaden Daniels, A good team right? allowed Pat Mahomes to ride the bench for a year. Yeah. And then how do you get a good team? You get build it. You murder in the draft. Yeah. yeah. And so you got to hit on draft picks. But if I've got a lot of high caliber draft picks, not only can I trade for free agency assets, but I can get good football players or yeah. people that are more consensus good football <clears throat> players, better athletes, right? So that's the thing I keep thinking about is like if I trade back with Minnesota yeah. and I get to 11 and 23 and I've got all these second round picks, right? And I say, and I'll probably get another second from them. Yeah. Can I use two of those seconds and a third next year to trade up five and spots and, get, yes. and pick – JJ or yeah. pick whoever I want. Yeah. And then is JJ with a starting left tackle, with a good end, with a nice addition at linebacker, a tight end. with a start yeah. with with Cooper yeah. uh, DeGene, for yeah. example, in yeah. that second like are those five players supporting him, yeah. allowing him to be more productive, or we get another receiver? Like yeah. that's where I'm like, that is very, very enticing to kind of accelerate this process. Yeah. I would be tempted. Like, I'd be literally draft day, my phone wide open. Yeah. Like, I would be very tempted to say yes. It would need to be a good offer. I need. I would need to be more indecisive about the quarterbacks than I probably. I'm pretty mm-hmm. indecisive on them now. But um, like, yeah, I'm, I was going to say the same thing. Like, you made a point. You got Caleb. Yeah. Oh, to, to us, like, he's like the for show. Yeah. Then I look at Daniels. I look at Drake, McCarthy, yeah. uh, Penix, yeah. Bo oh, Nix. Yeah. All those guys can fit in the same circle to me, yeah. same group. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I truly believe that hit up you you you, you can you, miss on either one of either one, but they all good. They yeah. all have talent. They all have potential. So if I can use my leverage with this second round pick and add more talent and add more talent mm-hmm. and add and and be able to get a team that's willing to give me whatever I want, yeah, why not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not go and say, look, man, I can add the pieces on the offensive line. I can get more picks and and willing deal later on in this draft with those picks. And I could get more picks for next year for the future and maybe find another guy that if this quarterback that I find later in the first round or later in the second round that doesn't work yeah. and get that like you're talking about should do or somebody next year. Yeah. Why not? 
Especially yeah. now you're getting a chance to build the foundation a little more. But you're see, getting put you get, getting to add more pieces to the to that line that's yeah. needed or to your defense or to you know wherever it may be able to need to be filled. So yeah. I think you you're in a great spot. And this is for podcast reasons, you yeah. know what I mean? We we we're just sitting here talking. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? Job Tana. Let's make sure fans are clear. You know what I mean? I've had a fan like we, threaten to kill me that. Yeah, we're, we're, just, just, <laughs> we're just talking. We're just talking, but when you really think about it, if you're not sold, keyword yeah. yeah. sold yeah. on yeah. those next two guys, if you're not in love, if you ain't in love, bro, who who man, look, and you think one of those other guys might be around if you trade back? Yeah, hey, shoot your shot. Hey, you got to ask yourself: If I plug a quarterback in here right now, are we a contender? All right, that's the big question you have to ask yourself. Uh, I need a left tackle. Mm-hmm. I, I, Corner. I, I need a. I need a, a, a edge rusher. Yeah, like I a need difference a, edge. Yeah, yeah I, I need things. You just need yeah. more talent. You just need more talent on the roster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, a lot more talent. That's how you get. It. That's one of the ways to get it. Yeah, is to get more draft capital. And yeah. I think yeah. Philly did an excellent job of this model a couple of years ago. Yeah, they, they looked did. like they were on fire. Then they drafted well. They got a whole bunch of pieces in there. Quarterback developed. They got healthy at the right time. And now they're one of the. They were one of the best rosters in football two years and, ago. And, and we know this as a fact. Every year it happened. It's gonna be two players that was supposed to be in the top twenty. I was one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Just gonna fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jaden Carter last year mm-hmm. failed. Mm-hmm. So I I gotta have. That's why I think them them second round picks we got in our back pocket. Mm-hmm. That's that's the ammo mm-hmm. in case somebody falls for Sean Nua or somebody yeah. falls and I need to get back in the first round to go get these guys. I think that's the leverage you always want to have. The other thing I think about too, and I, we've talked about this a ton on Ticket to the Draft podcast, but quarterback development and environment are so important and is mm-hmm. this environment is the roster in its current iteration good enough to support a young quarterback's development are yeah. they able to elevate the roster and that's the thing that i come back to is like maybe you need more pieces around yeah. the guy right to yeah. make it work and again like those are the questions that's why adam gets paid a ton of money and that's why we sit here and do a podcast Wait, you gave because that's a hard decision you give your young quarterback uh Diverse running game. I got li- thunder and lightning in the backfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, I give my young quarterback the center he needs, so he don't have to do any of the uh, the calls. I I got an interior that's set up. I got cosmic, my foundational guard on the right. I got my left guard Al Gretty. Mm-hmm. I, I good pronunciation there, by the way. Uh, well, thank you. I did go to the higher <laughs> learning institution. I right? I got the tight end over here with, with Ertz. However, how much yeah. he plays, no matter yeah. what. So I got some stuff set up for this guy's arrival. Yeah. But does it take make me a playoff team? And if mm. it doesn't, I have to seriously think about. I might need to trade down. Yeah. So that's why, man. Adam, good luck, man. Support you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, but that's going to do it for today's show. And thanks so much for listening and watching on YouTube. And please make sure you like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And that's going to do it for today's show. Thanks for joining in. Later. Here with the dumbest pause. <laughs> We are brought to you by Bet365. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. That's why we offer an in-game experience which covers over 78 sports and over 780,000 live streams to 90 million customers worldwide. Our online betting brand is powered by a world-class proprietary product and over 7,000 employees across the globe. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365, the official sport and betting partner of your Washington Commanders. Must be 21 plus and physically located in Virginia. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER.